pretty as the aspen in the fall. The leaves are turning yellow and the bird chirps parting call. And it's all a pretty picture that the silver brooks adorn. And that's when I see how lucky I am to be mountain so beautiful as a mountain capped with snow or the freshness of a frosty winter morn and that's when i see how lucky i am to be mountain born It was a day when all nature seemed in tune. The boy and his surroundings were part of some secret melody, a lilting song to lift the heart. There is nothing so attuned to the outdoors as a happy, carefree boy. Such a lad was young Jason. ignored his greeting, Jason sensed there was something wrong. Jason knew about lambing time. He knew that lambs sometimes died in birth. And he realized now he might best have been here to lend a hand instead of going off fishing. Afraid it's beyond help, Martha. We could have got to it sooner. If I'd been here to help, maybe you could have. Well, you mustn't blame yourself, Jason. Come lambing, there's usually a loss or two, no matter what. It's still alive. I can feel it. That's right. Is there something I can do to help? Get the milk bottle. Got some milk in her now. She'll be all right. Back to its mother now. That might be easier said than done, as Benj knew from long experience. Often, a ewe is slow to accept her own young after it's been taken away from her. Benj hoped the lamb's mother would welcome it back, but she didn't. At first, she was reluctant. Then she flatly refused. 
Her rejection was emphatic and final. <laughs> It was just as Benj had feared. The lamb was now an orphan, needing care. Looks like we got a bottle baby on our hands. My hands, Benj. Hall razor. You'll be feeding when you could be fishing. I don't care. Well, seeing that she wouldn't be with us if it hadn't been for you, She's rightly yours. So Jason ended up with a small and helpless lamb to care for. For the first time, he had a real responsibility. Major, the sheepdog of the ranch, was guardian of every bird and animal on it. None of his charges could put anything over on him. And that included the little orphan lamb. <laughs> to herd critters was his compulsion. And there were times when he overdid it, just to keep in practice. He could handle anything that bleated, clucked, hissed, or quacked. It was all in a day's work for Major. Quickly, the small lamb became Jason's pet, his shadow always wanting attention and knowing just where to get it. The boy had named her Bonnie. It seemed to fit perfectly. The closeness of the two was good for both. But to old Benj, the ranch hand who had taught Jason's father to be a sheep man, this arrangement had gone far enough. It's time Bonnie learned she was a sheep. It's time you learned how to be a full-fledged shepherd. I'm ready. Takes more than a stick of wood to be a good keeper of the flock. Come on, both of you. So, Jason got his first lesson in taking care of a flock. In the simple chore of getting the sheep out of the shed, there was something for the boy to know and to remember. Once you get them started, the rest comes easy. That's because sheep have such blind faith in one another, such a strong follow-the-leader tendency. Even a needless action by one may be imitated by those behind it, like leaping for no reason at all over something that isn't there. tell Major what to do, he'll do it. If you want him to move to his right, tell him, Major, away! If you want him to move to his left, come by! Come by! Take time! That means slow down. Go easy. That'll do, Major. That means the task's completed. Never doubt him, lad. You've got to learn to depend on your dog. Always remember, Major knows what he's doing. It wasn't long before Jason and Major were tending the sheep by themselves. Boy and dog were learning how to work together. And under their watchful eyes, the sheep thrived. Ah! 
Sheep herding, Jason discovered, was fun, entertaining. But Jason soon learned there were other sides to sheep herding. How do you get your flock across a stream swollen by spring thaws? Jason recalled Benj's words, that a shepherd doesn't send his flock where he himself wouldn't go, and go first, showing the way. and Jason took the train into town. For the boy, it was a moment of high adventure. But for Benj, it was something else. With all there was to do on the ranch, he hated to take the time. But he'd made the mistake of admitting he didn't feel quite up to snuff. And Martha had insisted that he see the doctor. Old Benj, it seemed, had never put much stock in doctors. their destination. A small town, really. But to a ranch boy like Jason, a real city. Benj didn't feel much like looking and loitering. Best get it over with, this doctor business. To be sure, he had been feeling a mite puny of late, but he was certain there was nothing wrong with a stiff dose of sulfur and molasses wouldn't cure. Nevertheless, here he was, just to humor Martha and keep peace on the ranch. Meanwhile, young Jason, with time on his hands, went about a secret errand of his own.
When Benj met the boy again, he didn't say what happened at the doctor's. He felt it was grown-up business. But in his heart, he knew he couldn't keep it secret forever. He knew he'd have to tell Martha. There's nothing wrong with me, and you know it. Let's not argue about it, Benj. I'll keep visiting doctors until I find one who agrees with me. No, you won't. You'll do just what Dr. McNeil says. He says you can't stand high altitudes anymore. You're not going to take the sheep up to summer pasture, and that's final. Who else can you get to do it? Everybody's busy. Benj, you don't need to hire anyone. I can do it. No, Jason. Mom, please. I'm a shepherd now, right, Benj? All right, Len. I think you just might be. If you remember what I've told you. And let Major do most of the work. Martha, I think the lad's ready. And it's time we let him prove it. Well... Oh, I knew you would! Snow line's climbing fast. Won't be long now. Pasture on the North Fork ought to be good this year. One bright morning in late spring, Jason set out for the high country. <laughs> He and Major and the sheep in their charge would be gone for many weeks. In fact, they wouldn't see home again until autumn. For the first time in many years, Benj had to stay behind. Much against his will. At least he knew the sheep were in good hands. Jason had made this journey before, but always with Benj, and never to stay. Now he was on his own. For a long time, his only company would be a dog, a flock of sheep, and himself. By late afternoon, Jason and the flock reached the lion cabin that was their destination. Here, his supplies had been laid in, and here was the lush pasture where the sheep would thrive. Twilight. 
daylight. And all was well near the end of that first day in camp. sort of spooky, but Jason didn't much mind. Just so all they interfered with was his music. Less than a week had passed before Martha rode out from the ranch to pay her son a visit. No need to fret about Jason, Benj kept telling her, and she tried not to. Still, she wanted to check for herself. That was a mother's privilege, that and worrying a little. Hi, Mom. Upon her arrival, the camp seemed in good order, and young Jason, for his part, felt he put on a fairly good show. But it so happens, mothers have a way of asking questions that would never occur to a small boy. How are you getting along? I'm OK. How do you like your own cooking? Good as mine? Oh, no. <laughs> but it's all right. What have you been eating mostly? Um, this and that. Things like um, bacon and beans. And beans and bacon. Bacon. I was afraid of that. Come on, lend me a hand. Bacon and beans. You need a baked potato once in a while. And I want you to eat plenty of those vegetables I brought. If you don't have the right things, you could come down with something. Mom, I'm not going to come down with anything. Had enough? Couldn't eat another bite. Oh, that's too bad. Because I just happen to have one of your favorites here. Blueberry? Well, I want to get back to the ranch before dark. Maybe his mother had been right about his camp diet not being quite proper. Jason realized it more with every mouthful. As time passed, Bonnie became more venturesome, more inclined to play hide and seek with Major. It was her favorite game to slip away from the flock and the dog guarding it, which could be a risky practice for a lone lamb. In this high country, you never knew who you might meet, an unfriendly friend or a too friendly enemy. Just on general principles, Major was against socializing with outsiders of any kind. He wanted his sheep kept home where they belonged. Everything neat and tidy. It 
it was bound to happen. There came a time when Bonnie's independence streak got her in trouble. It was one day early in September when the sheep were feeding in a remote wooded part of the pasture land. The forage here was rather special, rich and juicy, the kind to take anybody's mind off danger. Again, Bonnie had managed to detach herself from the others and was really in clover. That was when trouble arrived. A wise old timber wolf. Hungry enough to risk an attack on what appeared to be some unguarded sheep. He looked for the loner, the stray. As usual, that happened to be Bonnie. Fortunately for Bonnie, her thick wool had saved her from injury. And she had lost nothing but her trust in strangers. And good old Major, hero of the fracas, was also unhurt. And going about his work as if nothing out of the ordinary had happened. Not long after the wolf episode, the camp had another visitor. A much more welcome one. Son, you look just fine. How do you feel? Well, I feel great, Mom. And I think you're going to be proud of the sheep, too. Yes, they do look fit. No problem? Well, a few days ago... No. No problems Major and I can't handle between us. Jason, has there been any trouble here? Oh, no, ma'am. Uh, a few days ago, it looked kind of stormy for a while. But then things cleared up. Jason hadn't really fibbed. He just hadn't gone into detail. Coming to the end of the season. The leaves are going to be turning pretty soon. <laughs> You'll be needing your warm coat, and I want you to have it handy. Okay, Mom. I guess I can use it. Uh, are you going to stay for supper? No, I've got to get back now. I thought you might be able to use these, too. You think of everything. <laughs> One afternoon in mid-September, there came a quick change in the weather. The first big storm of the season was building up so fast that Jason was taken by surprise. was so threatening that he immediately decided to leave the high country and head for home. Jason didn't want to be caught out on the trail by either the storm or nightfall. So he chose a different way home, much rougher, but a lot shorter and leading to an abandoned building that could shelter both him and the flock. They 
made it in time. Let it rain. Here they would take shelter for the night and get an early start next day. Cover, Jason didn't care if it blew up a gully washer. During the night, it blew up much worse than that. An early storm that turned into a blizzard. This was what made every sheep man keep a close eye on the weather. Being caught in a snowstorm could mean disaster. By early morning, the high country was white as a Christmas card and buried under two feet of snow. Young Jason was shepherd enough to know what this meant. He must head for home on the double. His only chance now was to get the flock moving. Get going and keep going before the snow started again. This lull was their only hope their only chance. bodies, their small, sharp hooves, the sheep were poorly equipped for traveling in snow. Without constant encouragement and prodding, they were inclined to quit, especially when they were bogged down. Jason fought them, pushing, pulling, lifting, wrestling these unwilling animals twice his own weight. It was exhausting, back-breaking work. Then, suddenly, all progress stopped. The battle seemed lost. The trail ahead was impassable, blocked by huge drifts. The only alternative seemed to be a dangerous detour down a long, steep slope into a wooded ravine. It meant taking sheep where sheep should never go, but it had to be done. If Jason could get one to go, the others might follow. And Bonnie was the logical leader. This would be the moment Bonnie chose to be stubborn.
Fortunately, Jason's long tumble had ended in soft snow and seemingly without injury. Or so he thought, until he tried to walk. Suddenly, his ankle was shot through with pain, so much he couldn't even stand. Now he realized he was in a fix. Major seemed to realize it, too. First over the cliff was Bonnie. First sheep. Second sheep. Third sheep. Now the old follow the leader habit began to take over. Now there was another job for Major, a mission even more urgent. Never doubt him, lad. You've got to learn to depend on your dog. Home, Major. Home, boy, home. If Major knew one word, it was this. Many a time he'd obeyed this very same command. The storm that had swept the high country had descended as low as the home ranch. The snow didn't lie as deep at this level, but there was enough of it to cause concern for Jason and the flock. For every inch down here, there was likely a foot or more up where he was. For the last time, Ben, will you let me go? You know you shouldn't do it. Now, Martha, I'm going to make a ride up to the camp, and that's that. Sure. Ben set out along the old familiar trail. He knew every landmark, even under the snow. It was a path he had followed practically every summer of his adult life. That was to be the problem. He was traveling by habit. It hadn't occurred to him that Jason might have chosen a shortcut down.
drifts piled up in the gullies forced Benj to take to higher ground where the going was easier. And fortunately, the seeing was suddenly better too. Now he could see for miles in every direction. And now, here came Major. But why from the wrong direction? Why wasn't Major with Jason and the flock? What could have happened? It didn't take Benj long to read the answers. It was clear the dog was trying to head him off, to get him to follow in the new direction. Well, Benj realized he'd never doubted Major before. And this was no time to start doubting. Jason sat tight. There was little he or the flock could do but wait and hope the storm held off. Not far away, the wolf appeared again, still roaming these woods like some gaunt, gray ghost. Starvation had thinned him, had sharpened his hunger, and dulled his sense of caution. This was his chance. Sheep bogged down in the snow. The presence of a human unnerved him a little. But wolves are quick to detect weakness or disability in a victim. And somehow he sensed the boy could protect neither the sheep nor himself. The full story of what had happened could come later, but right now, Benj had all the facts he needed. The boy was safe, the flock was spared. That was all that really mattered. What was a little thing like a twisted ankle? For a man of the mountains, it was nothing. It would heal. Besides, he could still ride a horse. So the adventure on the snowy slopes, the hard test of will and courage for a mountain boy and his dog, drew toward a happy ending. When spring came again to the high country, the head shepherd of the ranch had a bigger flock than ever to tend. His partner was still on the job. Ducks, geese, chickens, even sheep. It didn't matter. Bonnie was now a settled matron raising a family of twins. And Benj was finally taking it easy. Not because he had to, but because he felt like it. It was just that time of the year and that kind of a day when all the world seemed in tune.